Hello and welcome to A Mindful Moment. I'm Justin Epstein, author of the top-selling book, Super You, and minister of the Unity Center of New York City. We are actually going to complete our study of chapter one of Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, today. And, um, and actually uh, conclude our mindful moments uh, for today, but we're going to continue with our guided meditations each week and, of course, our Sunday services. Please check us out on that. But I uh, want to thank you if you've been following along with these mindful moments as well as the chapter one in Eckhart Tolle's book. I feel like we've established a good foundation to read the rest of the book on your own to, to really, uh, if we live what we've talked about in these several episodes in chapter one, I think that's enough to live a whole lifetime, quite frankly. And I think today will encapsulate so much of what we've been talking about for weeks. And I'd like to just go ahead and read for you a little bit from page 25 an answer to a question that uh, is asked. The Buddha says that pain or suffering arises through desire or craving, and that to be free of pain, we need to cut the bonds of desire. Tolle says, all cravings are the mind seeking salvation or fulfillment in external things and in the future as a substitute for the joy of being. I have to tell you, I absolutely love that sentence. That sentence is years and years of study and search on my part. And to put it into one sentence like he did is just a brilliant statement. Because of our sense of disconnection from source, from being, from presence, we often look outside, and most people continuously, looking outside for something, for someone, to give us what can only be found inside. I mean, that's another way to really capture that. And looking outside for fulfillment in external things or looking to the future thinking when this happens then i'll finally be fulfilled and happy and that's and he says we're looking for that as a substitute for the joy of being as a substitute if you just joined in we're on page 25 in answer to the last question in chapter one Our desire is the joy of being. That's, that's our fulfillment. This is what the saints and sages have told us. This is what Eckhart Tolle has just stated so clearly and simply. And when we are in those moments of being present, totally present, then we tune in to our being, which is joy. Another word for joy is Satchitananda in the Sanskrit word, Satchitananda, conscious eternal joy. That is our deepest longing and desire. It's to just be in that continual awareness of being, of joy, or to use traditional word, God, being a continual awareness of God, which may connote, uh, imply that it's outside of us. And we, we've been saying the opposite. It's not outside of us. It's our true being. It's our true nature. So this is what we really want. So he goes on to say, as long as I am my mind, meaning I think I'm my mind, I identify with my mind, I am those cravings, those needs, wants, attachments, and aversions. And apart from them, there is no I except as a mere possibility an unfulfilled potential, a seed that is not yet sprouted. To me, that says, when I'm identifying with the mind only, then I'm identifying with the cravings. I'm identifying with the, 
with the, uh, the needs, the wants. I have the attitude that that's who I am because we don't know any differently. Or we identify with uh, who I'm going to become or what I'm going to achieve or have. Because we don't realize that we are being. We don't, we don't know fully the joy of just our being. He says, in that state, even my desire to become free or enlightened is just another craving for fulfillment or completion in the future. Now, that's a very important statement as well. Even the desire to be free, even the desire to, to achieve this state of um, complete freedom, he says, is just another craving for fulfillment or completion in the future. So don't seek to become free of desire or achieve enlightenment. Don't seek to become free of desire or achieve enlightenment. Become present. Be there as the observer of the mind. Instead of quoting the Buddha, be the Buddha. Be the awakened one, which is what the word Buddha means. Now, he goes on for another uh, almost a half a page or three-fourths of a page into page 26, and that ends chapter 1. What I just read, I think, is just brilliant stuff. Don't strive for enlightenment. Seek to be present more. To be present more, which means to be outside of this trap of constant thinking of the mind. Be more in the present, hearing the sounds around you, present to what we're doing. Maybe watching the breath. When you watch your breathing, you're out of the mind, you're present more in touch with your walking, your moving, your being. It may sound boring, but what Tolle is pointing out is it's when we do that, we're in tune with being. We're in tune with being itself. We're in tune with joy. We're in tune with fulfillment. And it's that that will continue to grow inside of us as Jesus talks about, the little seed of the kingdom will become a great tree. Well, that the birds of the air will nest in. The more time we spend in being. And I don't know about you, I've really enjoyed sharing this uh, study of chapter one from Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now. It, I think it's brilliant stuff. And it's more than brilliant. It's a way of being. And it's doing it that matters. It's not just reading about it. And if you've been following these videos, or if you want to go back and, and listen to them, it, it explains what we're talking about and how to do it. And I just sort of explained it just now. The desire really is about wanting to be connected with that state of being. And how do you do that? Tolle says to focus on being present, being present. And one thing I've noticed about myself is I really like to think. I really do. And we're not saying don't think. We're not saying don't use your analytical mind. There's a place for it. But what we are saying is are we addicted to our thinking? And when we notice all the thinking, can we bring ourselves back to the present moment? and enjoy the joy of being. Being here now, the joy of our true nature. All fear, all worry is, is about the future, usually, and or uh, frustration about the past or sadness about the past. Or, but being here now, there's just peace. There's joy in the now. And that's what we've been talking about literally, the power of now. 
I mentioned, and, and I'd like to conclude chapter one with that awareness. It's about trying to get out of the trap of the mind. And by the way, he's saying the same kind of thing in just a different way that other saints and sages have said it, that uh, Michael Singer says in The Untethered Soul, as well as other talks that he's given. It's the same basic message uh, with some nuances, of course. It's the same message. We get trapped in the mind, but we're not the mind. We're the one that can observe the mind. And so the practice is learning to not get caught up in the mind, but to learn to observe your thoughts, your feelings, and to be in the now. When you're in the now, you tune in to the presence of joy, of peace, of fulfillment. It has nothing to do with what we're going to get. It has nothing to do with the outer world. It has to do with where our focus of attention is. And that can be under our control. And you don't need anything to experience the joy of being. That's why you got Buddhist monks walking around with begging bowls. <laughs> At least they used to. I don't know what they do now. Uh, who are living in joy with little stuff, with few things. And other saints and sages throughout history, St. Francis of Assisi, who could have lived a life of luxury and he left it to seek God. And uh, so that's what we're talking about, the power of man. Anyway, I want to thank you. I, as I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, message, this concludes our study of chapter one and of the power of now for now. So um, I think if you, if you follow the videos up to this point, You'll be able to read the rest of the book on your own and, and really gain a lot of insight from it. And today concludes the mindful moments. If you've been a regular, I want to thank you for tuning into those mindful moments. We're going to continue, uh, but we're going to, this is the last mindful moment on Tuesdays and Thursdays. But we will continue the meditations on Wednesdays. And of course, you can tune into the services on Sundays and also uh, whatever other things, special events that are coming up in uh, December and uh, the end of December and New Year's. So stay in tune with these special events that are coming up. We hope you'll be a part of them. And um, so I hope you'll join me for a guided meditation. I'll be leading one tomorrow uh, at three o'clock. So thanks again, and let's do our best make the continual effort to practice the power of now. Until next time, I'll see you. Bye. Thank you for joining me for a mindful moment. Remember to subscribe to my channel for more mindful moments as they go live. Click above for a list of previous mindful moments to enjoy on your own time, anytime.